I felt guilty about writing The Art of the Deal with Trump for 30 years. And I thought that I could uh, get away from it by simply never talking about it, which I didn't. Uh, and then he decided to run for president. And I felt uh, almost a calling or an obligation to say about him what I knew. And uh, he got elected anyway. And I feel, I think, um, I feel very sad that I did that. It's, it's like, who would have possibly guessed at the time that it would be such a consequential decision? I thought I was 33 years old and it was a good job for a year. And he was a you know, mid-level New, New York City real estate developer. I, I just thought it wouldn't come to anything. So it's, it's, it's very sobering. I feel sobered and uh, sad. I created the Donald Trump he wished to be. Um, I wrote every word of that book with no, um, no engagement with him. Uh, while I was writing, and he read it quickly, and as far as I know, once, and that was the end of it for him. Um, so the image I created, I think, that was most appealing to people was not really that he was rich and glamorous and successful, but that he was brash and uh, honest and uh, you know, w would speak in, an, uh, in a direct way and um, was kind of uh, appealing uh, in a, in a, as a kind of rogue character. Donald Trump, and he, is, he himself has said this, is the same person today that he was at seven. And he has changed remarkably little. He is a case almost, you could say, of arrested development. He has the maturity of a very, very young person. Uh, and not only was he that same person at seven and when I met him in 1986, but he was still that same person when he launched his campaign. And remarkably, he seems to have been totally uninfluenced in terms of any kind of growth, even while sitting in the Oval Office of the White House. It's still Trump. He's, you know, he takes around a aging rock star for four hours and, you know, makes fun of Hillary. I mean, it's, it's, it's mind boggling. Well, there is no center. And that's actually the center of Donald Trump. The fact that there is no inner life, there's no moral compass, there's no set of deeply held beliefs, there's no real capacity for connection with others, that's the essence of Donald Trump. He's an empty vessel, he's a black hole, and he spent his whole life trying to fill that hole. And the problem is there's a huge leak in the bottom of that tank. And every time he pours in more money or more praise or more power, it doesn't make him believe in himself any more than he did. Now, it's funny to think of him sitting here with me listening to that because it would be so far from his self-description, he thinks of himself as the ultimate example of a confident man. But, you know, the people who tell you how great they are are very often the people who don't feel so great themselves. He's dealing with a great contradiction all the time. On the one hand, at this moment in time, he's sitting in the White House as the leader of the free world. What could make you 
from outside feel more confident about yourself. But on the other hand, he, as we know, he, look, he reads and listens to, he doesn't read much, but he listens to what people are saying and it clearly upsets him. So, you know, he's got one part of the equation that's around people tearing him down and putting his flaws right in front of them. And then he's got another part of him that's like, yeah, but I, I'm worth billions of dollars. I'm the president of the United States. Like, how come you guys don't get it? He is spectacularly uninformed and ignorant. And this I said during the campaign repeatedly. I don't believe he has read a book in his adult life. Pretty extraordinary thing to say about a president of the United States. He is incapable of focusing his attention in an absorbed way on any subject for very long. And therefore, he hasn't been able to take in information, much less reflect on it. So yes, he is without knowledge. And the story he has told himself is, I have such unbelievable instincts I'm so brilliant about intuiting the solution to problems that it doesn't matter whether I read. And by the way, who has time for that? I think of a, a famous screenwriter in the US named William Goldman who said about Hollywood, nobody knows anything. And about Trump and what's going to happen, nobody knows anything. He is so unpredictable and so volatile and so emotionally driven in a very, very, you know, complex, dangerous time that I can't begin to assess whether or not he could be impeached or choose to resign. I have to say this, nothing would surprise me. Unfortunately, that includes completing his first term and getting reelected. None of it would surprise me. But I also wouldn't be surprised if he got impeached. For example, if the Russia investigation shows collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia, he'll have to be out. I believe he'll have to be out. And then I said, yeah, I believed a lot of things. And maybe that's not true either.